everyone, Tori the Crafty Girl here. How are you doing? I mean, really, how are you doing? I'm gonna be honest, it's been a rough winter. It's just been rough. I have been struggling in many, many ways. Uh, you know, it's just been dark, it's been cold, I've been in a funk. So today, I'm pulling myself out of that funk and I'm here making a video for all of you. So today, I'm back and we're gonna go old school. We are gonna go on a journey together and see what happens. So if you're brand new here, hello, I am Tori. I do a lot of crafting and uh, as someone who is neurodivergent, I don't just do a lot of crafting, I hyper fixate on a craft until I know every secret, every in and out, every tip and trick there is possible. I share it with all of you. I will say I'm currently in my knitting machine era and that's lasted a couple of years. So today's video is going to be another behind the scenes video. We have done a number of these in the past um, that were received really, really well. I like making them because I never know if the project I'm working on is going to turn out. Um, and uh, if you didn't know, I'm actually a pattern designer. I do a lot of uh, designs for the circular knitting machine. Um, I'm also a crocheter. I don't do patterns for crochet. I do crochet because it's my escape. Um, I can do it without having to think about it. And it's harder for those of you that have been asking me for crochet tutorials. It's just, that's just kind of my escape. That's my escape hatch. I do that. I do that off camera. Um, I will share, I made, this makes me very, very happy. I don't know if you know, but I love flowers. Um, so this is a, like a little project that I would work on. Um, and I really enjoy it. But what I really also enjoy is making uh, new projects and new patterns and new designs for the circular knitting machine. I do sell some of them over on Etsy, but then I also give you free tutorials here. Uh, and then every once in a while, we'll just do something crazy like this where I am kind of working on a pattern. Um, I don't have anything solidified. So this is gonna be a learning experience. We'll see if it works out um, because this is the beginning. So you never know. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful, but we just don't know. Now I have a long list of tutorials that y'all have been asking me for. They're on my list. They're right there. I can see them. They're, they're ready. They're coming. Um, but it does take a lot of time and energy. And as I mentioned, I haven't had either of those lately. So I did just finish a project. I do want to share with all of you. Some of you may have seen this if you are on Instagram or if you saw the post, but I just made uh, this little adorable little top. This I made last week. I actually wore it in public this weekend and got a compliment, which made me feel so good. Um, but I will be doing a tutorial on this. This one is also just made with four panels and then a little bit of crochet. But the project we're working on today, I want it to be as beginner friendly as possible, especially because we're using panels. And I know, I say the word panels. And every time I say that to someone who works with a circular knitting machine, it's always like, oh, panels. Oh, but it's nothing to be afraid of. Really, it's one of those techniques that once you get into it and once you learn the best way for you to make panels, you're going to freak out with how many things you can actually make using panels. So you could use tubes, I suppose, to make what we're going to be making today. Um, but I don't think it, it wouldn't work out the way I want it to. So uh, what we're going to be making together today, hopefully, again, this is just in my brain right now, we, I haven't even done anything for this, is lounge shorts. So little knit lounge shorts. And uh, what I have in my brain is I want them to be, uh, you know, not only beginner friendly, easy to make, but also flexible sizing. Because I am a little, I'm, I'm a little bit smaller, okay? And I totally understand when I make patterns, I'm trying to keep the flexibility, especially working with a knitting machine, it's easier to be flexible because you can just increase the panels. Um, so I'm trying to be more aware of that as I'm creating my patterns. So this pattern in particular, actually, it's not a pattern yet. It's just an idea. Um, but this idea really is just making it four panels at the maximum size and then uh, stitching them together at the inseam, stitching them on the sides. And uh, then, uh, you know, whatever anyone else wants to do, you can create a drawstring at the top and just call it a day. Okay. That's one, one method you could, especially being user friendly. Um, for me in particular, what I have this vision of is I want them to be 
hyper feminine, adorable, super cute. I I'm imagining wearing a little top with a bow with high waisted shorts. Now, I don't know if that's gonna happen with a circular knitting machine, but I know that I can at least create maybe a high-waisted band to give it a look and then maybe some scalloping around the bottom. Um, but this is really just gonna be, again, it's a journey. It's a journey for all of us together to see what happens. And thank you so much for joining me as uh, you know we explore the depths of my brain. And I apologize in advance. So if you like content like this, don't forget to subscribe. We go live typically on Sundays. Uh, and, uh, you know, I put out content when I can. And I'm always receptive to questions and comments. Um, like I said, education is at the heart of everything I do. I love teaching. So for me, being able to share what I've learned with you really is, is why why I am here on YouTube. So for this project, we are gonna be making four panels. As I mentioned, we are working with panels, um, but no fear, if you are brand new to panels, I am going to show you how kind of a quick overview of working with a full size panel. Um, but if you have additional questions or you want some more tips and tricks, I am gonna link that video down below along with some other getting started videos that could be helpful for you. Um, and also if you already know some of these things, I will have chapters. So if you already know how to do a panel, you don't want to see that piece. You just want to see it all come together. You can absolutely check the chapters uh, below and uh, you'll be able to go directly there. All right. So we'll start with my basic sketch. Again, this is the very beginning of the pattern design process. Typically at this point, I already have, you know, I already have a little bit more going on. Um, but again, with my idea, we are gonna do four panels. So just one, two for the front and then two in the back. For each of those panels, we will be stitching together here and then we'll leave uh, an inseam. I'm thinking it's gonna be three inch inseam, but we'll see depending um, how much the yarn stretches once it's seamed. Uh, and then uh, taking measurements, and I'm doing 65 rows. So I've already done a few of the panels because I wanted to test for size. I want to do a gauge swatch. Um, and so for me, after my panels are steamed, they are going to be 18 inches long by 15 inches across. So that is what I get from the yarn that I'm using. Um, but you'll see here, I have one panel equals about 14 and a half inches. This is before steaming. So I do wanna show you uh, the difference um, once we get to this part, because when you're figuring out the size, if you're following along and you wanna try this project on your own, you definitely wanna make sure that it's going to fit you. Um, there are certain projects that you absolutely need to be very detailed. So, you know, if you're gonna be making um, you know, a top, you typically want to take quite a few measurements just to make sure the armhole fits, that it hits the right area, um, you know, at the bodice, on the neck, those type of things. I'm not gonna be that exact with these because I feel like if you take four squares and you take, you know, a drawstring and you pull them together, it's gonna get, it's gonna do what I want it to do. So that's the plan. And then I do wanna have um, a drawstring with a big giant bow. Although that may be, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that because as I mentioned earlier, I think, um, I wanna do a little bow bra top. So I think those will look really cute together. But I am gonna come back in with a crochet scallop at the bottom just to give it that coquettish look, that super feminine, um, really girly look. Uh, so that is kind of the plan. And here is just another rendition <laughs> yeah, you could see my design skills. Um, this is just kind of what I thought. These are a little bit longer than what I think they're going to turn out. I think they're actually going to be a little bit shorter like that, uh, but we don't know yet because they're not done. But the yarn that I'm using is this big twist yarn. This is called Retro Pop. I love the colors uh, and I had quite a few skeins of this because when I saw it, I was obsessed. So this is what we're using. And again, we're making four panels. So I am gonna show you the process of making panels on your circular knitting machine. We are gonna be using the Addy 46, as I mentioned. 
we will need waste yarn for this project. Um, for those of you, because I always get the question, what's waste yarn? Where do I get it? Why do I need it? Um, waste yarn is just a contrasting yarn. Okay, it's just a color that does not match the yarn that you're using. And you use this as you cast onto your machine and cast off of your machine. And what it does is it provides this layer that will tighten up the bottom stitches so that your finishes will look a lot cleaner and it'll just look a little bit more pleasing to the eye. Do you have to use this? No, but if you're doing this to make something that you're proud of or that you wanna wear in public, I absolutely recommend using waist yarn with almost every project that you work on. Um, there are exceptions as with everything, but we are gonna use waist yarn. To start, um, for this project, as I mentioned, we're gonna be using the full set of panels. And the reason I wanna do this, especially as a beginner friendly panel project, is because the machine, the Addy specifically, so this is an Addy 46, it does have a row counter built in right here. Um, I know the Centros do not, but you can absolutely buy some add-ons, I think, for those machines, um, but I, with my brain, I will lose count so easily. So what I love about panels with doing the full panels on our machine right here is that it will actually track your rows if you're using full panels, which is fantastic. And so that's what I want to make sure. Um, the right side over here, this is where your switch is for tube and for panel. So we're gonna keep it in that panel position, which is up and You'll see that you have three black pins right here. And if you try to go past that, your machine's gonna say, nope, it stops. And that's what a panel does. A panel essentially lets you knit from this pin all the way over to this pin. Uh, and then that way it'll open it up and give you a lot more space. So a lot more flexibility, especially when you're making wearables. So we're gonna start by casting on with our waist yarn. And for the bottom layer, I actually use two different pieces of waist yarn. One of them is a rip cord or a ravel cord, but we'll start, actually I don't need that just yet. We'll start by just taking our yarn tail, okay? Leaving a little bit of a tail there just to make sure that it does not slip out for you. And we're gonna cast on like we normally would with our circular knitting machine. So this white pin is our first pin and we're gonna go behind it we're gonna go in front of the next one, behind, in front, behind, in front, and we're gonna do this until we get all the way to the other side. Now, again, as a reminder, for those of you that already know how to cast on to your machine, know about waste yarn, know about panels, feel free to skip ahead to the next section, um, or this could be just a good refresher. So in front, behind, in front, behind, and we're gonna do this again. So we get to the other side. Now, one big tip for you that's gonna help you out, especially when you're just starting out with panels, since we're using all 43 of these pins that are available, what we're gonna do is we are just gonna continue to knit each row until the machine stops us. That's it. Okay, so you don't have to try to figure out, did you go far enough? Did you not go far enough? Just knit until you can't knit anymore. Then we're gonna take that yarn tail and put it in our yarn feeder and close that up. So then we're gonna come back. Now you do wanna make sure right here, okay, that that last pin right here, or that last um, yarn is under this bumper right next to the white pin. So if you go all the way to the other side and let it stop it for you, you'll be fine. Now you wanna hold on to your yarn because you do wanna have some tension. We're gonna hold on to it. And it's a little bit hard to see because it's black, but I'm gonna show you some more when we get to the other yarn. And we're just going to hold on to it, give it a little tension, make sure that it doesn't slip off or anything. That's why you wanna hold on to it. And then you're just gonna keep going the other way. Now the first few rows will always kind of feel like there's something wrong. Your machine might try to stop itself or get stuck. That is totally normal. Just go slowly. You don't want to break your handle. So now see, we're back at this side with this pin right here. We're just going to keep going until the machine stops us. Okay, can't go anymore. And because I'm using this and or making sure that I can't go anymore, we know that this has gone far enough. So once again, we're gonna hold on to our yarn tail 
Now, what I do want to point out, if I wasn't holding on to this and this yarn was really loose right here, it could slip off. And if it slips off, it's not going to knit the last pin. And this is one of the reasons why you get some dropped pins on the edges. So if you are struggling with panels with those dropped edges, you need to make sure you have tension. So right here, you can see that yarn expand and contract, and that's because I'm pulling and not pulling. So you just want to hold on to it until it gets under the pin. Once it's under the pin, now you're safe. Again, we'll continue to the other side. Making sure that the last loop, so then again, another reason for dropped edges is this loop right here. If it gets stuck on your pin and it doesn't get down in the bottom, you are gonna have a dropped loop. So when you get here, this one fell, but if you have to use your finger to push it down, go for it and then continue until the machine stops you. And I think we have enough for one more round. We'll see. So then we're gonna come back. And now it's time to switch yarn. So that is casting on. Now, because we're casting on, or this is the cast on row, what that means is once you add your working yarn, what can happen is it's really hard to remove the bottom waist yarn. I've heard uh, I've heard people say to cut it off, and I'm going to tell you, do not cut off your waist yarn. What a waste, and I know it's called waist yarn, but here as crafters especially, we do so much work and we are contributing to our landfills. Um, every time you have that, even if it's just just a couple of pieces of little cut off yarn scraps and you don't reuse them, guess where they end up? They end up in the landfill. And uh, because we're working with acrylic yarn, that's what I'm working with here, it's not going to decompose very quickly. So it may seem like just a little bit to you, but honestly, just always, just let's just keep, especially because it's Earth Month, right? We're going to have Earth Day coming up. Um, just keep that in mind as you are working. So one way to prevent the need for cutting it off, and there, you know, there's always going to be times where something might happen, but we're going to use one additional row of contrasting color. And this is a rip cord. It's called ravel cord. There's a lot of names for it, but essentially we're going to put this one piece of yarn, okay, into our machine. Which direction are we going? We're going to hold on to the end of our last uh, yarn color that we used. And it's okay that it didn't go under that one because we really just wanted to go under this white one here. And we're going to continue around until we get back to that loop and then we'll release it. So what this is going to do, and you can take it off the black pins, those are not going to get knitted. But what this is going to do when you cast off um, and you are, once you pick up all the live loops, you'll be able to just pull out the one green piece of yarn and then all of the black waist yarn will fall right off because it's essentially, it's the divider between your waist yarn and your working yarn. So now we are ready for our working yarn. I'll throw that in my little bucket there. Now for this project, what I found is I do one, two, three, if I do three good, three good pulls of the tail, that's all that I need to do a single crochet finish on the cast on end. So I'm going to pop again, just three little pulls there into the center. I'm going to pop my working yarn in the yarn guide. And I think we're going back that direction. And before I do anything else, I'm going to set my row counter because we are going to 65 rows. So now Oh, nope, going the wrong direction. We're going this direction. Again, we're just going to hold the tail of our last yarn color, and we're going to hold the tail of our new yarn color. And I do, it doesn't get knitted right here. So you'll see that I am going around the, the black pens or I'm going under them. It's not going to knit. It's essentially just going to fall off eventually. But it does help keep that yarn in place and gives us some additional tension. So that's why I do that. I find it super useful. So now I'm just going to hold on to the yarn again. And then I'm going to continue slowly at first. Remember the first couple of rows with a new color. 
You just want to take your time. Okay, and we're back to that white pen again. Just go all the way, hold on, pull it back. And then the yarn, uh, or not the yarn, the row counter does say that we've just gone one row. We're gonna go back again. See, it does just fall right out, perfect. All the way to the side. Hold on to the yarn to give it some tension. And then just keep going. Now again, I'll link the video down below that goes into more details with some tips and tricks I'm working with panels, but that is all there is. So we're just gonna do 65 rows of this going back and forth, and then we'll come back together and I'll show you how to cast off with waste yarn as well. So we just got back to 65 rows. So this is what we're looking at so far. Again, oh, it's so beautiful. It just works up so uh, pretty. So if you are working on a different size, let's talk about sizing here for a second. So again, I'm doing 65 rows, which for me and this particular yarn right here will give me 18 inches long by 15 inches across. I'm doing four of those. So that's gonna be essentially both legs are gonna have a 30 inch diameter all the way around, uh, which again is great and you can add additional. So depending on your size, if you do need to make these um, a little bit larger of a size, you could add an additional panel over here on the sides with the same size. Okay, so again, super flexible when it comes to sizing. When it comes to the length, this is up to you as well. I wanted these to be a little shorter, a little cuter, and then I am gonna do the little bit of a, you know, edging on the bottom, some of the, the frilly stuff down there. Um, so that's gonna give a little bit of length. I am gonna show you here in just a moment the difference between your pieces when they've been steam blocked versus when they haven't. Because it's one of those things I recommend, especially when you're working with panels, to water block or steam block your items because it will actually change the length. So just like we did before, um, I am going to leave the whole skein in here because I want to make sure that I use just what I need and not anymore. I don't want to have any waste. So I'm going to take my yarn just like we did. Pop it this way. I'm going to put that in the yarn guide, leaving a little bit of a tail. And then we're just going to go a few rounds. Now with the cast off end, I would absolutely recommend, especially if you're brand new, two panels, um, do at least five rows, do 10 rows. It unravels so easily, um, which is a positive because it's easy to get off, um, but it's also a negative because it also means that your work can actually pop off um, unexpectedly. So we do not want that to happen. We don't want it to unravel without our intent. And then when you're done with that, the last thing is to uh, uh, go back and forth two more times. So the first time is without the yarn and the yarn guide, and that's gonna release all your stitches. Okay, that's one. And then the second time is just to force it off of the machine. So all you do is do this. Once the needles pop up, it just pushes it off of your machine. And there we go, there is our panel. So now what I wanna show you is the importance of blocking your pieces. So I haven't finished the edges on this one yet. In fact, let me grab the other one. We just did this one. Um, so you are gonna to wanna to have four panels for this project. This is a panel that I actually started with yesterday, has the same amount of rows. So this has 65 rows, so does this. So when you look at these two pieces, you would never guess that they are exactly the same. They are both with 43 pins. They are both with 65 rows. The difference is that I actually steamed this piece with my hand steamer, um, and then I did block it uh, so that it dried in, this sh in the shape that I wanted. Do you have to do that? Of course you don't. You don't have to do anything. 
um, but it does make a huge difference and it will make it easier, especially when you're trying to seam things together. Instead of having to battle with the curl, once it's flat, it's gonna be so much easier to seam up your items. So that is why we wanna steam block this. And let me know if you want a video on showing you how I do it. Um, but honestly, I just, I lay it on a towel, I steam it until it's a shape of a square, and then I put it on my blocking mat with pins and then I let it dry. That's it. Now to finish your project. So here's the one that we just did. We need to finish the ends. And when you're new to working with a circular knitting machine, again, you may be intimidated by the mention of crochet if you are not a crocheter. But honestly, just get yourself a hook. Get yourself like a five millimeter hook, a four and a half millimeter hook. Um, if that's the only crochet hook you own, it will be enough. Because I typically use this one, I think this is a four and a half, it's a seven in prim. Um, I used to use my five hook, but then I lost it. I don't know where it is. Um, and I, okay, and I say this, let me just show you. I always like to bring you into my crazy world, which let me, let me know if you can relate to this, if you crochet. Um, yeah, I have a little bit of a collection of hooks. Do I use them? No, some of them maybe, but I can't, I just can't bring myself to get rid of them. Um, but I can't find my favorite one. She's somewhere, but I do love these prim. So we're gonna start, I'm gonna show you how to do this. Let's do the side that has that rip cord so that I can show you how to work with that. So you'll find, um, depending on where, which side the yarn is on, that's gonna tell you how you're going to finish this. So because this yarn tail is on the left, we're actually gonna turn the work just like this so that we can identify those loops. So we're not looking for the green, we're looking for, or the black, we're looking for the first color that is contrasting or different. Now I know these are very similar, so let me find down here, the yellow will make it a little bit easier to see. So here, these yellow loops, these are live loops, which means if you were to just take off this waist yarn right here, the rows would just unravel because there's nothing holding them in place. So you'll see a lot of folks um, who don't wanna crochet, just take the yarn tail and then take their darning needle and just pick up all of those loops with their um, darning needle. Again, it doesn't give you a very clean edge or a clean finish, but it is a very beginner friendly way to do it. But let me show you how actually how to crochet finish with a single crochet. Um, because this is a wearable, I am going to use single crochet. You can use a slip stitch. Um, you can add chains if you wanted to have a little bit more stretch to it. It really is, again, personal preference. So we're just going to find the first loop here. Okay, you just don't wanna miss any loops here. So we have this loop just picked up by that. Excellent. And then we're just going to go through here. There we go. Okay, so we just pulled that through that last corner loop right here. So now there's the green. We're going to take our hook and we're going to go under the loop that's right, that other contrasting color. We're going to take our yarn and pull it over. We're going to pull it through that loop just like that. We're going to yarn over the hook and then we're gonna pull it through both. Okay, so that's our single crochet. It does give it a lot more stretch. So again, not the green, that's gonna be our ravel cord. We're gonna come into the, the little loop behind it, pick up that yarn and pull it through, yarn over, pull it through. And we're gonna continue all the way down to the other end. When you get down to the end, don't forget to pick up that last loop. We don't want to have any loose loops at all. All right, so now let me show you. We've done the whole end to end. So here's this end all the way to this end. Um, didn't have to cut the yarn tail because this is the one that we cast on with. So we knew that it was a little bit shorter. So this is the purpose of the ravel cord. Let me show you. If we were just trying to pull off this um, waist yarn here, the black color, 
you're going to see it's, it, it's like it's knotted. It doesn't easily come out. And when you pull it, it actually starts to knot. This is why people cut it off. So instead, what we're going to do is we're just going to come in and we're going to pick up the one green th yarn here. We're going to pull one side at a time, makes it a little bit easier. So I'm just pulling it out of the left side. Okay. And then I'm going to come over here and pull it out of the opposite side. And now watch this. Oh my gosh, it always makes me so happy. And then I just throw this in my pile and I reuse it for next time. And there is our finished edge. Now for the bottom, we're gonna follow the same process. The only difference is that we won't have that ravel cord to remove because this yarn, if you barely breathe on it, <laughs> it will absolutely just start to unravel. If I just start pulling this, the whole thing will come undone. So you do not need to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this edge and then we will come back together with four panels. Okay, so now we're back with our four panels. They've all been steamed and blocked, and I'm gonna apologize in advance for all of the noise. Um, the heater just kicked in. It, it's like 50 degrees again today. It's so cold. Um, and then the next door neighbors are also having a tree removed, so there's a ton of noise happening there. Um, but if I don't do this video now, it's never gonna get done. So we have our four panels right here and how we're gonna put those together. Uh, this essentially think of it as the front of the shorts and this is going to be the back of the shorts. So you do wanna look at your color combinations and make sure they line up. So if we were to take this panel and move it up here, you'll see that there's blue and green on this side um, and we just want that same kind of color palette here. Also on the sides, the sides don't really matter to me, but it's more of where that seam is that's going to be at the front and then the seam at the back. And you just want that to be as little um, or as, as non-noticeable as possible since it's going to be a seam, especially in those um, areas. So that is where we are now. The next step is to take measurements on uh, your body. Okay, it's a new day which is why I'm wearing a new outfit. Uh, I needed to steam block those pieces last night and it does take a little bit for yarn to dry. So uh, um, I walked away from it and came back to it today. Uh, so what you're gonna do now is we need to measure what we want the inseam to be, um, or the rise to be, sorry, not the inseam, the rise. And so you're gonna do that. You're gonna take your little tape measure right here. Okay, and I got my little yoga pants on. And you wanna see, you can even do this with a pair of like leggings or shorts that you already own. You're gonna take your tape measure, put it to the rise you want it to be at. So this is, these are high rise, that's the size I want it to be. And then you're going to loosely, cause you don't want it to be too tight, right? You wanna have some looseness here. You're gonna pull it around and then pull it to the top. <laughs> I know this is such a weird thing to see. Um, but you're going to pull it to the top and then that essentially is going to be that rise that you're going to have. So we are going to, uh, so let's go ahead and just take this off and see where we are. So mine about 20, where is this? Show this here. Um, so I'm going to look at about 27 inches is what I am looking for. Um, and then you're going to divide that by two. And the reason we're going to divide that by two, in fact, you can easy way to do that is just take your tape measure and fold it in half. Don't even have to do math that way. Okay. So I'm going to be doing about 13 and a half. Okay. 13 and a half inches down on one side um, and 13 and a half inches down on the other side. And then that equals the full 27 inches. And that should give us enough room in that area. So this is an important measurement to make because um, we're all different size. We all have different, uh, you know, the ways that our bodies are. So you definitely want to make sure that you measure that. Also, when you're stitching it together, the great news is that you can, um, you know, stitch it without finishing it off. Try them on and see if that works for you. And then you can always um, just do like a basting stitch. So try that. Try just doing like a single basting stitch through. Um, and then if you like it, then you can go back and do a mattress stitch, which is, I think, the method that I'm going to be using. So anyway, Let's do some stitching. Let's let's get let's get these let's get these shorts put together. So here we have our pieces. So these are going to be the two first pieces for the front or the back. 
napkin. These are gonna th these are gonna be so flexible that you'll be able to have front or back. Um, again, the whole purpose of this pair right here that I'm designing is to be very user friendly, super simple, um, without a lot of additional measurements. So that is that is my goal. Now, if we were to take, I'm gonna take my tape measure here, and we're gonna measure down 13 and a half inches, which is what I just showed you for my measurements. So that's gonna be about here. Now, let's take a look here. This is now our inseam. That's not, that's not a lot. That's not a lot of inseam right there. Um, but the good news is these are going to be super loose around the leg. So it's not like this is gonna be skin tight, um, but we're gonna be stitching this to that other leg behind. So if you're worried or if you're concerned, you can always go up a little bit more as well. Um, but again, we're just playing around with this. This is, this is what it looks like in my brain when I'm doing pattern design. So for me, I think right to about here um, will be good. Let me take that measurement. But I also have to keep in mind, I'm going to be adding a crochet border to the top um, to the short. So I'm going to be adding probably another two inches. So if that's the case, if I'm adding another two inches and I, let's say I just did 11 and a half, that would take me to here, um, which gives us a little bit more leg room. So I'm going to split the difference and let's go about right here. And I'm just going to grab a little stitch marker. Now you do want this to be the exact same on both sides. Um, so these two right here, that distance down should be the same as the other. Um, but again, when you try it on and play with it, you can adjust it. That's the best part about this. So I know some people like to count stitches. I, uh, especially when I'm pattern designing, unless I have something very specific, I just go by measurements. And that's why I steam block all my pieces so I know how they're gonna lay um, once they are stretched out. Because the another benefit of the, the steaming is that it does stretch the yarn and it makes it so much more malleable. Um, and this is why I really, really, really do it for almost every single project and pattern that I'm working on. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, let me think, how am I gonna do this? Now, I laid it out like this because I think that for those of you that are visual and also me as I'm trying to figure out this pattern here, um, if I were sewing, it would be a little bit different. And again, if, you know, my background is in is as a sewist. So for me, I'm thinking, I have to think about things a little bit differently when it comes to yarn and working with these pieces. Let me explain how I have this. So these are our wrong sides facing us. This, we just did this together, okay? So this is where we're gonna stitch down. That's the length we're gonna stitch on this one. So fold that over here. And then these are the other two panels that we had. So we're gonna do this pair, this will be the back. So we'll just say front on the left, back on the right. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna stitch down to the exact same spot on this side. Um, but what we could do, which I think I'm actually gonna do, is start up here in this left-hand corner, stitch all the way down to our mark right here. I need to mark this side though. And we do want it to be an exact match, but I can get to that in a second. Let me just pop this on here just for visual. This will just be a bit for visual. So we'll start up here, we'll stitch down to the stitch marker, then we'll come over here, we'll just flop over to this side, and then we'll do uh, a number of reinforcement stitches because this is gonna be the, uh, the middle of the um, crotch area and you definitely wanna make sure it doesn't come undone. So we'll do some reinforcement stitches here and then we'll come back up this side all the way to the top. So that, if you can visualize this, this will be the front that sits flat on the belly. This will be our little crotch area, okay? And then this will be the back. Uh, and then after we do that, we'll be able to come back and stitch our legs together. So we'll have these sides together and these sides together, and then we can stitch the outsides. In my brain, this is going to work. 
All right, so we just finished. I finished the mattress stitch from the waistband here to the center crotch area. And if you wanna see what the inside looks like with that type of stitch, it's still, there's always gonna be a little bit of extra, especially working with these panels. But now that I'm down here to the bottom, I am just going to do a knot. So I'm just gonna knot it together here. Do a double knot just to make sure again securing it okay so now we just double knotted that okay so that just is there these are going to be a part of our legs um, and now what we need to do is come back over to the other side and we're going to pick up well I'm going to remeasure this I'm actually going to go back through and just double check um, I'm going to hide all these tails first it'll just make it a little bit easier and once I do that, I'm going to continue the same um, strand, the same strand of yarn. And I'm also going to put it through here and I'm going to do two knots. And then I'll probably reinforce it just a couple of times with a whip stitch around and uh, then go through the fabric and then do another mattress stitch all the way up to the top. All right, so we have made it back to the top. I'm just going to finish pulling this all the way through and then we will knot this off. And the best part about these raised edges right here is that it's really easy to hide your yarn tails. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so our shorts are coming together. Let me move that out of the way. We'll open up our pieces here. See how we did with our planning. The planning phase is always the most important. So we have our front and back, those two pieces there. Um, when you do a mattress stitch, it does tend to tighten up the yarn, especially because this is already steamed. So if you do find that happening, you can just take your steamer and go back and steam the seams. That will release that yarn um, a little bit and make it not so noticeable or bunched up, which it does tend to do. Um, so it still has some stretch to it though, which is great. All right, so here we have that. That is where our center crotch is stitched together. So then what we'll end up doing, okay, you can kind of get a visual for this. We are going to stitch from here to here, okay, that's the inside of the first leg. Then we're gonna come over here and we're gonna stitch from there to there. So that will be the inside of our short. And then all we have to do is stitch the outside on the right and the outside on the left. And then honestly, that could be it. Then you could just add a drawstring to the top. So let's go ahead and do that. So these, I, I haven't tried them on. <laughs> haven't tried them on. So uh, that will be the big test. Okay, so here we are. I have finished stitching everything up and I wanted to give you um, some final measurements on this before I go in and do my crochet customization. So this is the base, okay? So this is what we just did, nothing fancy. Um, it has taken a little bit just because mattress stitching can take a little bit um, of time, but the overall base size right now, okay? And again, I haven't re-steamed this after I did it. Um, so let's just go for the waistline. So the waistline is about, let's see, it is about 28 inches times two would be the full diameter. So that's 56 inches we have um, to play with. So again, very flexible sizing. All you would really need to do here to cinch it in, if you just wanted the simplest of terms, you could just use your circular knitting machine or you could just you know crochet um, or grab ribbon and then just weave it through the top waistband and pull it through here and then just cinch it together that's all you would really need to do so what do we say 56 inches total across now um, the size that I made here lengthwise so if we're going lengthwise here from the waistband to the bottom of the short, um, probably about 16 inches. So if you want something longer, you can continue to do this. You can also turn these into shorts or shorts. These are shorts. You could turn these into long pants if you wanted to do that. Um, the rise that I created for these is about four inches. 
um, and that is what I prefer. I like to have a longer rise, but if you, you know, want like a two inch rise, like a little, um, like a little booty short, <laughs> you know, that would be cute for a festival to wear over a bathing suit, maybe with a little bikini top, super adorable. Um, so if you stick around, um, I'm gonna come back and show you, I'm gonna actually put them on after I do a crochet waistband. So I'm gonna do a crochet waistband. Um, and then I'm also going to add uh, some scallops to the bottom, kind of like a little ruffling detail. Um, something else I was thinking about as well, you could add pockets um, if these were a little bit more fitted. So, so many ways to customize this. If you wanted these to be more of a tighter fit, you could take some more exact measurements. So, you know, you would take, instead of it being this size right here, we could, you know, do different panels. There's a lot of ways you can do this. You could add pockets, you could add pockets to the outside, but these are going to be super loose and loungy, which is what um, my goal was. So we'll come back here shortly. So stay tuned. I'll show you what it looks like. I'll finish. So thank you so much for coming along on this journey. You get a little sneak peek into my brain and what goes on in the pattern you know, iteration stage, the stage where I have an idea, it goes on paper and then it comes out like this. Uh, I do this all the time. I just don't typically record this process. I usually share with you the straight tutorial that goes from beginning to end. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed this, getting kind of an inside look. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, and if there's anything else that you wanna see, let me know. I'm pretty pleased with these. I will uh, work on a pattern for them. Um, but again, it's super simple. Four panels, stitch them together, and you have a pair of lounge shorts. So let me know what you thought in the comments, and until next time, everybody, see ya!